we should take this opportunity to establish our sati, our mindfulness, bringing it to bear on the four foundations, and particularly on the first foundation of mindfulness, the body. As we watch the breath moving in and out with our inhalation and exhalation, we are observing the air element in the body. And if we think of the hair, nails, teeth, skin, bones, etc., this is looking at the body in terms of the earth element. When we recollect the blood and pus, oil within the body, This is looking at the water element. And when we think of the heat of the body and its ability to digest food and such, this is the fire element. In the Satipatthana Sutta, the foundations of mindfulness, one of the seminal suttas that the Buddha taught, this was part of his instructions for how to look at the first foundation of mindfulness, the body, to divide it into these four elements, these four different constituents. So when we fight an enemy or face a difficulty, we must have a firm foundation This is what the sutta instructs us towards, is establishing a firm foundation in ourselves. The foundation of the body, of feeling, of mind, and of dhamma, or mental qualities. These four foundations are firm things that we can establish our practice and mindfulness on in order to fight the defilements or the kilesa. Just as an army or nation must have a firm foundation in order to fight an external foe, just so, as we learn to face the defilements in ourselves, in our hearts, we must have a firm foundation. And this is what the Satipatthana Sutta gives us. The beginning or most basic of the foundations which we focus on is, once again, the body. And there are different ways of approaching this foundation. We can establish mindfulness with our inhalation and exhalation, or we can divide the body into four elements of earth, water, air, and fire as we spoke of before, just remaining with the body and making the mind remain with just this foundation, with just one thing, not allowing it to proliferate into various different thoughts and areas and making it or encouraging it to remain just with one subject, namely this foundation of the body. And if we are able to calm it and restrain the mind in this way, then the Dhamma has a chance to arise in us and we may see the truth of the Buddha's teachings. When sati remains with one thing, it becomes samadhi or a lucid calm in the mind, and such samadhi serves as the basis for clear knowing wisdom, or panya in Pali. The fact that we don't see clearly now is due to the fact that our samadhi, or firmness of mind, is not enough. As soon as we try to bring our mind to the breath, and keep it there, then it runs off. And without this lucid calm, 
than the characteristics of existence, anicca, anatta, dukkha, inconstancy, not self, and suffering, are impossible to see clearly. Longpur Cha taught us to practice developing our mindfulness constantly. Different places had different ways of doing this, emphasized different approaches. Some taught to keep our mindfulness constantly trained on our various motions and postures throughout the day as we walk, stand, move, extend or contract our arms and legs, drink, eat, or speak and remain silent. We keep our mindfulness trained on the body in following each of these motions. And this is part of the first foundation of mindfulness expounded in the Satipatthana Sutta, that of the body. Or we can approach that first foundation through the breath. The breath is also part of this first foundation of the body. We may follow it and see and watch as it goes in and out. When the mind or chitta is trained on these subjects in meditation and throughout the day, then it does not go out to various mental impressions and thoughts. It grows peaceful. And as it grows peaceful, then it begins to perceive the truth in our form of the body. As this body form moves, walks, does various things throughout the day, the heart begins to see it almost as a robot or an automaton, a doll. It sees clearly that it's not our self. Because it's quiet and serene, then it has the ability to see truth. However, if the chitta fails to grow calm, then it takes everything as a self, or it takes the body as a self. However, if it is imbued with this quality of samadhi, then from normal knowledge that it may have gathered from study or listening to Dhamma, it will move to a true seeing of that Dhamma, a true realization of it. From knowledge, we move towards realization. Which sees and perceives that this is just a body sitting, walking, speaking, remaining silent. And as it watches, the chitta remains calm and wisdom arises. It sees the truth of Dhamma and this is something we should all strive for. As it grows calm, it may turn its attention, the mind that is, to the chitta itself, the state of the mind. This is a refined foundation, but as the mind grows calm and samadhi deepens, it begins to become refined enough to see more and more clearly the qualities in the mind at that time, the mind or the body becomes light and buoyant. The mind becomes cool. Various external sense impressions such as sounds, smells, tastes, or our internal thinking become less compelling because our mindfulness is quick enough to keep up with them, to know them and let go, and thereby achieve freedom from attachment to them. It does not become lost. Longpur Cha spoke about this as avoiding falling into liking and disliking. If the chitta is quiet, then it can know various 
mental and sensory impressions and instead of falling into aversion or attraction towards them, it may simply know and let go. It does not get caught. And this is this path to seeing Dhamma. Longpur Cha taught us that this is the direct way to Nibbana, awakening. As our mind becomes increasingly calm, rapture or pity arises and we feel enthusiastic and inspired to practice. We are ready to sit, to walk, to put forth effort. We don't have to force ourselves because the joy and rapture associated with the practice are so great. Longpur Cha did not attempt to expound the Dhamma he taught constantly in terms of the various lists and categories spoken of in the Buddha's teaching. The seven enlightenment factors, the four efforts, the eightfold path. While he would do this at times, he rather appreciated and emphasized a simple approach to speaking about the Dhamma, namely that of establishing and strengthening mindfulness, just this one thing, constantly. He taught that if we establish mindfulness and also develop ourselves in sila or morality, then this was what we could focus on in our practice and it would be enough to take us a great distance in that practice. While monastics may have many precepts included in this aspect of morality or sila, he would emphasize the five basic precepts in terms of laity and their practice and spoke about how this was enough between this and sati or mindfulness, one could experience or move towards the four stages of liberation, Sotapanna, Sakaragami, Anagami, and Arahant, that is, the stream-enterer, the once-returner, the non-returner, and a fully enlightened being. He didn't speak frequently about these four stages of enlightenment. He didn't get into the complexities associated with this doctrine. Rather, once again, he taught us to focus on sati and sila, mindfulness and morality, just that simple basis of practice, and to put forth effort. So we should not take this life for granted. It's the perfect opportunity for us to practice this path. Everything is ready for us. And no one else can lead us down this path. It is up to us to motivate ourselves towards practice. We must develop the heart and strengthen it so that it is no longer a slave to craving as it has been for so long. This is no easy task. But every day, we may move a little bit closer to that goal of ending craving in ourselves. Every day, we can lessen craving's grip and control over our minds. Until one day, one moment, we will encounter the, pure, the purified heart. This path towards the purified heart can be moved towards through mindfulness established in the body. As I've spoken of, this first foundation is a powerful and robust practice. Similarly, the other foundations of mindfulness are part of the path. We establish mindfulness not just with the body, but with feelings, mind, and mental qualities. The chitta, when it's brought and restrained constantly to be with these foundations, grows calm 
and develops lucid wisdom, samadhi, which develops eventually into wisdom, or panya. At that point, it can di divide the body into the four elements and see clearly that it is not a self, that it is anatta. What we see or take as a self in the body is the unit of the body. Rather, we perceive it as a whole, a unity, and therefore can't help but see it as atta or self. But with a proper degree of sati, mindfulness, and samadhi, we are able to separate out the various constituents using this recollection of the elements, earth, water, fire, air, and break up this perception to the point where we perceive anatta. It's all up to the level of our mindfulness, sati, and that of our sampajanya, or clear knowing. These two qualities are paired, and Longpur Cha would frequently illustrate the connection between the two by speaking of the act of lifting up a glass of water. We have mindfulness as we grasp the glass. Uh, we know what we're doing. However, as we hold the glass, we know in a more broad sense that we are holding the glass. This is Sampajanya. With this quality or these qualities of Sati Sampajanya and the Samadhi that comes from them, we perceive arising and passing away. And this of all phenomena, and this leads us to the vision of the Dhamma. If our sila, our morality is good, then it's all up to the power of our Sati and Samadhi its strength. If it's enough, then we will see clearly, but if not, then it may take longer to develop. We may develop it by watching the arising and passing away of the body and its postures, its change, as it moves about its day, sitting, walking, standing, speaking, etc., we constantly look at it and keep our mindfulness focused on it so that we can see it's changing. And one day, our various dharmic qualities internally, our sati and sampajanya, all the factors of the Eightfold Path with which we have cultivated, sila, samadhi, and panya, gather together when the indriya and the bala, the five faculties and the five powers, namely faith, mindfulness, energy, concentration, and wisdom, are ready, then this gathering can take place. The path can usher into liberation. The first of these indriya of these five faculties is sata, indriya, or faith. And it's developed little by little, but part of how we develop it is by seeing that the Dhamma is the only thing of true value in our lives. Everything else, all of our possessions and even our own bodies are temporary and will pass when we pass away from the world. And this knowledge and understanding gives rise to faith and therefore motivates us to practice and realize all that I have been speaking of. <laughs>